Good afternoon, everybody. I think as the clock is about to strike one, we'll go ahead and kick things off. I just want to say welcome once again, and thank you all for joining me on this Friday afternoon. I know you're probably eager to go ahead and kick off the weekend, so I'll try and keep things short and succinct, but also quite informative and engaging. Now, for those of you who I haven't met before, my name is Navi, and I am both anatomist, as well as representative of the Lernico family and Primal Pictures. Now, during my time as a student, I spent many years studying both anatomy and physiology, and during that time, I had the privilege to both tutor as well as demonstrate to some of my fellow students. And that gave me a good understanding about some of the struggles that students often face when trying to learn and engage with this type of subject. Now, I hope that with these six different powerful learning strategies, that you as students will be able to effectively apply them in your own self-guided learning to help improve, and in this case, enhance or elevate your understanding of anatomy. Once again, I'd just like to apologize that your cameras and mics have been muted, and that's just to ensure that the session does run smoothly. But please go ahead and pop any questions that you do have over in the chat box, and we'll answer them towards the end when we do a bit of a Q&A. Now, on the agenda for today, considering that Primal Pictures is a web-based application, we'll go ahead and digisect or virtually dissect each of those different six learning strategies before jumping over to the platform and exploring how we're able to incorporate these six different learning strategies using the following titles, starting off with anatomy and physiology, then jumping over into our 3D atlases, starting off with both 3D atlas and then 3D real time, followed by applying the information towards a more clinical aspect over in disease conditions, and lastly, tying everything together and applying all of those six different learning strategies in the medical learning outcomes. And once again, towards the end, we'll go ahead and do a bit of a Q&A. Now, these six different learning strategies were developed with the understanding, or in this case, the application to help students become fully engaged with this particular subject long, apologies, long after they've completed their exams in order to increase their ability to make things more memorable. Now, starting things off, the first learning strategy that we'll go ahead and take a look at is dual coding. Now, simply put, for this particular learning strategy, we'll focus on combining words with the explanatory text alongside our highly immersive and engaging visuals. Now, Primal Pictures does contain a wide variety of different interactive 3D models, as well as some other accompanying media options in the form of either an explanatory video, some labeled slides, as well as authentic um, dissection content. Now, being able to have highly detailed, medically accurate explanatory information alongside that interactive 3D model allows you to get a more holistic appreciation and understanding about the content that you're currently engaging with. Next, if we jump over to space practice, this involves extending your study over a longer period of time into manageable or bite-sized chunks, which in turn helps to strengthen your memory as well as give your brain some more time to essentially absorb this information. And this is where we'll take a look at using the anatomy and physiology title through some of those different learning objectives across some of the different topics applicable to each of the different systems. Next, we'll hop over and take a look at how to apply um, retrieval practice, or simply put, the ability to retrieve or recall information without the aid of visual use. Well, apologies, without the aid of visual um, materials. Now, for this particular learning strategy, we'll jump over into 3D real time and take a look at where we're able to perform a virtual dissection, as well as create our own customized label diagrams that, um, that we can then later incorporate into our future study notes. In addition to 3D real time, there are some other titles, such as the Perceptual and Adaptive Learning Module, or POMS, as well as quizzing, which will aid in your identification of different structures. Next, we have concrete examples, serving as the tried and tested study, um, apologies, the tried and tested study technique, loved by many lecturers as well as students alike. And this is where we'll jump over into diseases and conditions and take a look at how we're able to use some of the different three models, as well as the explanatory videos to get a better understanding about the gradual progression between healthy versus diseased tissue 
along with the relevant pathophysiology to get a better understanding about how we're able to interpret these different diseases and conditions. Next, we'll take a look at focusing on elaboration. Now, for each of the different 3D models that you'll go ahead and see, for any structure that you go ahead and select, you'll then be provided with the necessary explanatory information. And littered throughout each of those different sections, you'd have some hyperlinks. And once you go ahead and click that, it'll then push you over to the relevant content, providing you with a full explanation for that structure in terms of origin, insertion, innovation, blood supply, as well as some relevant clinical instances or applications. And then lastly, we have interleaving, or the ability to switch between different ideas or concepts. Now, it's important to understand that anatomy and physiology cannot be viewed in isolation. And the ability to jump between different topics, such as between anatomy and physiology, followed by 3D Atlas, and then finishing off with diseases and conditions, gives you a good in-depth understanding about how to process information from its most basic aspect of gross human anatomy and physiology, all the way down to a more complex approach of functional and clinical anatomy. Now, <clears throat> touching on which titles we'll go ahead and explore, we'll start things off with anatomy and physiology. Now, anatomy and physiology serves as a virtual textbook and it marries together the anatomy and physiology of the human body by teaching it to you in a guided manner using a, uh, using a spaced learning approach. And for this particular title, we'll go ahead and explore some of those different learning strategies, looking at dual coding, interleaving, as well as space practice. Next, we'll jump over into 3D Atlas. Being one of our two 3D Atlas of gross human anatomy, 3D Atlas functions more in the layering system and allows you to explore um, every single piece of anatomy using both medically accurate as well as visually engaging 3D models. Now, accompanying, or in this case, accompanied alongside some of those different interactive 3D models will also be some content related to imaging, some clinical and dissection slides, as well as some biomechanical animations. And for this particular title, we'll go ahead and take a look at how to use dual coding as well as elaboration. Next, we'll jump over into 3D real time. And this is where we're able to perform a virtual dissection. For 3D real time, you're able to create your own customized label diagrams, as well as your own customized 3D model. Now, an additional feature that has been added into 3D real time is the ability to apply catabetic colors. And this creates a more realistic interpretation about what students would typically see when engaging with catabetic content in a dissection hall. And for this particular title, the various learning outcomes or strategies that we'll focus on will be dual coding, elaboration, as well as um, retrieval practice. And then jumping over to something more clinical, we'll explore the diseases and conditions title. Now with diseases and conditions, it's been approached by mapping the content across 16 different specialties, and it's presented to you with a explanatory video alongside the associated text discussing both the differences between healthy versus disease tissue and then the gradual pathophysiology for each of those different conditions. And this is where we'll take a look at applying both concrete examples as well as elaboration. And then tying everything together, we'll take a look at how we're able to merge each of those six different learning strategies into one by exploring the medical learning outcomes. Now, this was birthed from the collaboration between Primal Pictures and the Anatomical Society of the UK and Ireland. And the way this content is presented to you is ideally suited for a flipped classroom setting and allows you as the student to take learning into your own hands by presenting you with a start to finish approach, teaching you the necessary gross anatomy, microanatomy, as well as how to tie all the information together and apply it towards a more clinical setting by incorporating some of the different diseases and conditions videos that we'll go ahead and take a look at. Now, I know there was quite a bit of information, but we'll go ahead and take things slow when we jump over into the platform. Just before I stop sharing the presentation, what I'd like to highlight is that down in the right-hand corner, there is a link to our social media. Now, that's where we regularly post some fun and lighthearted content about some of the struggles that students often face when trying to engage with this type of content. 
And it's also where we regularly post some updates about our future webinars, as well as some links to our recent crash course videos. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing the presentation and then reshare my screen over on the homepage of Primal Pictures. There we go. Let's shift that. Down. There we go. Let's maximize that. Perfect. Now, considering that Primal Pictures is a web based application, the main means of accessing it is at a website known as anatomy.tv. For those of you who aren't familiar with how to access the platform, depending on the way that the subscription has been set up at your campus, please go ahead and reach out to either your lecturers or librarians, and they'll be able to assist. Now, when first logging on to Primal Pictures, you will be prompted to create a personal profile. It's not essential, but there are some benefits, specifically the ability to select an occupation or specialization. Now for today, I've gone ahead and selected myself as a student with my specialization being anatomy. And what this does is that it'll open up three additional options, namely recommended, favorited, as well as recently viewed. Now in my recommended section, Considering that my specialization is anatomy, it'll push every single piece of content specific to that specialization over to my recommended section. Now for any um, particular title or module within that title that I've favorited, as you can see, there's a little heart icon. I can then quickly jump over to my favorites and then access some of those favorite modules. Now, let's say I had been studying one of the different models, or in this case, systems in a and the night before. I can then quickly re-access that by jumping over to my recently viewed. Now, Primal Pictures does contain a wide variety of different media options, and you're able to simply search for that by jumping over into Browse, Index, or Results. For Browse, you can simply search based on the region. Some of those, um, apologies, um, one of those different 11 systems for the human body. Your preferred media option being either a explanatory movie or video, interactive 3D view, slide, or biomechanical animation, and then simply based on titles. I'll go ahead and give you a full overview for some of those titles shortly. Now, with the index, this just functions very similarly to that of a conventional textbook and allows you to sift through some of those different media options as well as titles to find any um, specific piece of content. And taking that search step one step further, if we jump over to results, let's say we wanted to take a look at the cardiovascular system. We'll go ahead and jump into the heart and then relate that to, let's say, the lungs and the diaphragm. Now, after searching these two different organs or structures, what you'd see is it'll push every single piece of content specific to that structure over to my result pane. And I'm then able to tailor my own individual learning experience depending on my preferred style. Jumping back to the dashboard and to all titles, let's go ahead and do a bit of an overview for each of the different titles. The first one that we currently have are those medical learning outcomes for anatomy. Now, like I said initially, this was birthed from the collaboration between Primal Pictures and the Anatomical Society of the UK and Ireland. For each of these different 156 learning outcomes, it'll go about teaching you this content in a guided manner and is most suitable to the undergraduate medical curriculum for anatomy. Next, we have diseases and conditions. This is where we have over 100 different common diseases and conditions stretched across 16 different specialties, and it goes about teaching you the associated changes between healthy versus disease tissue, as well as the relevant pathophysiology for each of those different conditions. Next, we have 3D Atlas and 3D Real Time. Now, these two titles function slightly differently with 3D Atlas using more of a layering system, whereas 3D Real Time allows for complete freedom and flexibility to create your own customized 3D model as well as your own customized label diagrams. Now, for two of the titles, there are some apps available for download. What you'd simply have to do is be logged onto the campus Wi-Fi. Go ahead and select either the App Store or Google Play. You'll then be pushed over to the relevant store. Simply download that app, and then you're able to turn off your Wi-Fi and use this content offline. Now, don't be alarmed that if some of these different titles 
aren't available on your institution's um, subscription. This is just because I am currently logged into my sales account. We then have the virtual um, reality option, which merges that highly interactive and engaging interface found in 3D real time and allows you to explore anatomy through a whole new lens. We then have functional anatomy and therapy, which goes about teaching you the associated gross motor movements for the musculoskeletal um, system, as well as houses some content specific to exercise physiology. We then have anatomy and physiology. Now, this serves as your bread and butter across all health sciences, and it encompasses 20 different modules, um, <clears throat> as well as all 11 body systems, and goes about teaching you this content in a guided manner by once again marrying together the anatomy and physiology of the human body. We then have quizzing being the second title with an app available for download. And there's a fun little mix thrown in by Primal to help you test your identification of different structures. Now for Palms, or the Perceptual Adaptive and Learning Module, this serves a dual functionality for both staff and students. For staff, this is where you're able to create your own customized classroom. From a student perspective, Palms, um, Palms makes use of an algorithm which tracks your gradual progression and creates a customized learning experience by forcing you to master and identify different structures from three different angles, three different times, until you've confidently and accurately identified that particular piece of anatomy. Next, we have imaging, which goes about testing your identification of different anatomical structures using some different image modalities in the form of either an ultrasound, X-ray, CT, or MRI. And then lastly, we have the clinical specialties. And this just takes a more niche approach, going about teaching you the associated anatomy specific to some of these different specialties in medicine. And across some of the different modules, there will be some content relating to both patient examination, as well as some surgical videos. Now, I know there was quite a bit of information, but let's go ahead and take a look at how we can apply those six different learning strategies over in some of the different titles, starting off with anatomy and physiology. Now for today, I thought let's go ahead and jump into the cardiovascular system, just because this is quite a nice section for students to try and visualize and see how you're able to apply some of those different learning strategies. Let's go ahead and orientate ourselves as anatomists, starting off with some of the different menu options of how to navigate each of these different systems. What we firstly have over on the far left are those various menu options, along with the various topics or lesson plans encompassing the cardiovascular system. In the center, we have our interactive 3D model. And over on the far right, we'd have those various learning objectives that allow us to apply the learning strategy of a spaced approach or spaced practice. And then we have our explanatory text alongside our interactive 3D model, which then allows us to once again apply that learning strategy of dual coding. Now let's jump over into the gross anatomy for the heart. What I'd like to point out is, for every single one of these different 3D models, you're able to add and remove different layers to expose individual structures or to take a more fine focus. Now with this particular model or section that we're taking a look at, that's highlighting the various sulci of the human heart. But for today, let's go ahead and jump over into some of the different learning objectives. And if we take a look at the first one, discussing the positioning of the heart, let's go ahead and scroll down. Now with this particular learning objective, what we're able to do next is simply push over that 3D model. And as we move through some of the different layers, we can expose the heart and take a look at its overall positioning within the diaphragm in relation to the rib cage. And once again, this is where we're able to apply that aspect of dual coding, where we have our explanatory information alongside our 3D model to get a better understanding about the positioning. Now, once you've gone ahead and completed this particular learning objective, what you'd be greeted with is an interactive learning activity. Now, these do vary quite a bit in terms of the type of questioning, but most often than not, we'll focus on testing your identification of different anatomical structures. And this is where we have the ability to apply that learning strategy of um, retrieval practice. Now, many of the different anatomical models 
also come accompanied alongside either authentic dissection content or a um, histological slide. And what I would like to show you next is that with this particular model, now for each of those different structures that we highlight, there are those roll over labels. But now with this particular model, we're able to visualize some of the finer de details located within the chambers of the human heart. And if we go ahead and scroll down, we can find an, there we go, there we go. We can go ahead and find an accompanying um, dissection image, which is still fully interactive and engaging. And for any structure that we highlight, we're able to get a better understanding about its overall borders. And once again, now we're able to apply the learning strategy of a concrete example. Next, once you've gone and completed this, we can then jump over into some of the more microanatomy for the heart, taking a look specifically at those individual muscle fibers, and then later jumping into the physiology, for the, um, in this case, for the cardiac cycle, cardiac output, and then jump back between each of the different sections, applying that learning strategy of interleaving. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and explain some of the different menu options so that you're able to maximize your potential using the anatomy and the physiology title. Over at AZ, this just functions very similarly to that of your conventional textbook that we saw over on the homepage. At the beaker icon, this is where you'll find a full collection for each of those different interactive learning activities. Next, forcing you to challenge yourself using that aspect or learning strategy of um, retrieval practice, we have a full comprehensive list of quizzes encompassing every single topic across each of those different lesson plans. And towards the end, you'd get a full overview. And the nice thing about these quizzes is that you are provided with some feedback about whether or not you were correct or incorrect. Now here with this first example, we're being prompted to consider which of these different options form part of the cardiovascular system, knowing that we would have the heart, blood, and blood vessels. We'll go ahead and submit that and then be provided with the necessary feedback about whether or not we're correct or incorrect. Similarly, let's go ahead and see with the second question, if we go ahead and select the incorrect answer. And then we can see, once again, we're provided with that necessary feedback. Now, this information wouldn't be quite relevant if we couldn't apply it towards a more clinical or practical setting. And this has been achieved over at the little heart icon, where we have some different clinical cases, information linked to aging on the cardiovascular system, as well as those all important case studies. If we jump over into this particular example, here we see that we're provided with a full comprehensive overview for coronary heart disease, providing um, provided with an overview of both causes, symptoms, diagnosis, and treatment, alongside an accompanying image, which typically is presented as either a form of imaging or a physical manifestation of this condition in a patient. Next, there are those unfortunate changes that do occur to our anatomy and physiology on the cardiac cycle as we age. And with this section, this helps reaffirm our understanding about the various changes that occur as a result of aging. Next, forcing us to think even more critically, we have those different case studies. And once again, this is where we're able to apply the aspect of both um, retrieval practice as well as um, elaboration. Now, here with this example, we can see that unfortunately, we have a 37-year-old male who unfortunately suffers from an incompetent aortic valve. And for each of these different questions, it'll test our understanding about being able to recall some of that information that we previously engaged with. Now, lastly, I'm going to go ahead and shift through some of the different um, menu options. Now, as you can see, with, with this um, specific statement, any particular piece of content that I save or favorite will be stored to my cloud, meaning I'm able to access this content offline from any device at any time. If I wasn't logged into my personal profile, I would then simply save this content to my browser, meaning I'd only be able to access it from the original device that I previously saved it on. Next, you're also able to simply share the content as a link, the, the ability to um, embed it, which is more suitable to that of your lecturers. And then all importantly, considering that load shedding is back in full swing, it's important to go ahead and make sure that you have access to this content at your own leisure. And this is where you're able to save and download some of the information 
simply as an image or video, as well as a topic text or topic PDF. Now, I highly suggest that you go ahead and save it as a topic PDF, because what that'll do, as you'll see shortly, is merge some of those 3D views in a two-dimensional aspect alongside the relevant explanatory information to once again give you a more engaging form of learning material. And then lastly, over at the gear icon, these are just some settings that allow you to customize your user interface. Let me go ahead and check how much time. So in this case, we're still good for time. I'm going to go ahead and jump over into 3D Atlas. And once again, we'll stick along the trend of the cardiovascular system by jumping over into the thorax and abdomen. Perfect. Let's go ahead and orientate ourselves once again, considering that we are exploring um, anatomy. Firstly, we have some of our different 3D views. And in the center, we'll have our interactive 3D model. Now, what you'll see is that our model is quite detailed by comparison to what we previously saw over in anatomy and physiology. And for this particular title, we'll take a look at how to apply the learning strategies of dual coding, as well as um, elaboration once again. Now, as we sift through some of the different tissue depths, let's go ahead and take a look at the heart. Now, considering that I've gone ahead and highlighted the right ventricle, as you can see, we're greeted with the relevant associated explanatory text. Now, for any one of these different highlighted words, if we go ahead and select that, it'll then push one of the different media options available throughout the 3D Atlas title to our main viewing pane and allows us to get a better understanding about how to apply this information from both a, <clears throat> my apologies, from its simplest standard of gross anatomy all the way down to its more clinical application. And let's take a look at how this is maybe presented. So let's go ahead and scroll down. And as we can see, for the right ventricle in this case, we can take a look at some of the different clinical applications um, specific to this particular structure. Let's go ahead and select um, this particular slide. Now here we can see we're prompted with a, um, <clears throat> apologies, a clinical slide, or in this case, representation of what a, <clears throat> apologies, of what a acute myocardial infarction would look like and how this would affect the overall anatomy for the particular structure, specifically the right ventricle. And if we jump over into the second option, this is where we have some imaging. And let's take a look at an axial model. Now, once again, for any structure that we go in and highlight on either our 3D model, or in this case, our MRI, it'll highlight that appropriate structure. And overhead, we get the relevant explanatory text, allowing us to essentially use that learning strategy of dual coding. And once again, we have those different highlighted words. And then if we go ahead and select those, It'll push that associated structure over time and viewing pane, allowing us to interleave between some of the different concepts of basic anatomy all the way down to its clinical application. Next, let's jump over into the slides. Now, as you previously saw, we already took a look at some of the different dissection images, but we're also able to jump between both the clinical slides, some labeled um, anatomy slides, and then lastly, some still MRI images, which once again, you're still able to have that full level of um, interactivity. If we jump over to the next option, this is where we have some surface movies, where we're able to get a better understanding of the overall gross motor movements or actions involved in some of these different muscles. And then as I sift through some of the different um, menu options, will have your various anatomical structures, which have been divided um, systematically. Then once again, we have our index, the ability to save and favorite this content, copy or share the information supply as a link, embed, download, and our user interface options. Next, let's go ahead and jump over into 3D real time. And this is where we're able to perform a virtual last section. In the interest of saving time, I'm going to go ahead and make use of one of the pre-made layers, just because it might take quite a bit of time 
demonstrating how to create your own customized 3D model. There we go. If I minimize that over on the far left, once again, we'll go through this menu options shortly. In the center, we'll have our virtual dissection table with our 3D model. And over on the far right, that's where we'll have our categories to select from in order to create our own customized 3D model. Now, down below, we have a bar which represents your virtual um, dissection tools. What I'm going to go ahead and do is just clear my main pane and jump over to the heart. Now, as you can see, we have some different pre-made layers for different tissue depths of the human heart. But if I go ahead and expand both the left and the right heart, as you can see, for any one of these different structures that we select, we're able to create our own customized 3D model at the level of individual structures. But what I'm going to go ahead and do is simply select the full scope for the human heart. Now, don't mind me, I'm just going to go ahead and deactivate this little function that I'll reapply later. So let's go ahead and add in some arteries and veins. Let's go ahead and add in a couple of veins. Add in those. Those. And there we go. Perfect. Now, if we go ahead and zoom in with our 3D model, once again, you're able to completely rotate your model a full 360 degrees and visualize various pieces of anatomy from any angle. And this is important because it allows you to get a better understanding of both spatial awareness as well as structural um, recognition. And for any structure that you go ahead and highlight, here we have the right ventricle once again. If we jump over to the text box, now we're able to apply that learning strategy of dual coding. And for any one of these different structures that we go ahead and highlight, apologies, that we go ahead and select, allow then highlight the relevant structure and allows us to get a better understanding about the positioning of the right ventricle in relation to some of those different sections or structures in this case. Now, for this particular sentence, being able to visualize the deep muscular ridges of the um, trabecular carnet located within the right ventricle can be quite difficult to often visualize. And this is where we're able to apply that learning strategy of a concrete example by performing a virtual dissection. Now, with the right ventricle currently highlighted, let's go ahead and explore some of those different dissection tools. If you go ahead and simply go in, my apologies, if we go ahead and simply select inspect, now we're able to isolate the right ventricle, rotate that structure, and then zoom in to take a look at what those muscular rigid walls would typically present, um, apologies, would typically um, present as. And once again, we'll go and deselect that and now jump over to our window icon. Now, this is where we have some different pre made models as well as the all important um, dissection content. I highly suggest that you go ahead and make use of some of these different pre made models before creating your own customized labeled model because it can be quite difficult to assess which structures are relevant. We'll go ahead and select that example that we saw over in anatomy and physiology. We'll go ahead and half maximize our dissection image. And now what we have is our category content alongside our digital twin or interactive 3D model. And for any structure that we go ahead and select, it'll highlight that associated structure and give us a good understanding about its overall positioning as well as borders. Once again, applying that learning strategy of a concrete example. But let's say we want to engage with some of those finer details, such as the tricuspid valve, as well as the quarter tendon. What we can do is go ahead and either ghost or hide that structure. And this will allow us to once again visualize those deeper underlying pieces of anatomy to get a better understanding about its overall positioning and relation to one another. Now, if we go ahead and hide that structure or virtually dissect away, we can then go ahead and select the tricuspid valve or the uh, papillary muscles, minimize that dissection image, and then jump back to the text box where we have the relevant associated information. Once again, applying the learning strategy of dual coding as well as interleaving. Next, let's jump back to our window icon, scroll down, and find one of our pre-made models for the heart. 
Perfect. Now, unfortunately, the human body isn't exactly color coded, and this can be quite difficult for students to often visualize and understand when engaging with authentic catalytic content during a um, anatomy spot test. And this is where Primal has thrown in that nice little mix to apply the catalytic colors. And what this does is that it challenges you to apply your understanding of where these structures lie in relation to one another. Let's say, for example, you were prompted to identify the location as well as the course of one of the coronary arteries. Now, knowing that they originate at the aorta, you would then have to recall some of the um, apologies, some of the previous information that we learned to get a better understanding about its origin, its course, as well as what structures it may lie um, in relation to. Once again, applying that learning strategy of um, retrieval practice. I'm going to go ahead and reapply our color coordination and then jump over to the pencil and ruler icon. And this is where we're able to create our own customized label diagrams. For this, you're able to add any pins and labels into any one of the different visible structures. I'm going to go ahead and just pop in a pin. There we go. And for some of the different names, we can go ahead and remove or change those names and then insert some questions. So let's go ahead and pop in name this structure, as well as go ahead and remove the names for those particular structures that we've originally highlighted. And then you're also able to add a freestanding text box where you can simply jump over to the text box, copy in some of the associated explanatory information, and then use that alongside your customized label diagram for that all important aspect of dual coding. So let's go ahead and just save this heart study. Material. There we go. Once again, we can also highlight any particular point of interest, as well as make use of our free draw tool to follow the course of any artery, nerve, or vein, or point out any particular point of interest. And if I go ahead and take a quick snapshot of this image, let's just say heart once again. I can simply select OK. I'll then be prompted to download this image. And as you'll see shortly when this pops up, it'll include all of those different labels and pins that I've previously placed. Perfect. Now I'm going to go ahead and clear these options and simply go ahead and explain some of the different menu options once again. The ability to save and favorite, share the information simply as a link, and then your navigational trackpad. So tying all of that information together, we explored some of the different um, uh, learning strategies specific to the basic understanding of gross anatomy and physiology. Now let's see how we can apply those learning strategies towards a more clinical aspect by jumping over into diseases and conditions. Now for diseases and conditions, the way that each of these different <clears throat> or just the way that each of these different conditions are presented to you is with a explanatory movie or video. Let's jump over into my coronal infarction. Now I'm going to go ahead and play this video and mute it. And take a look at how we're able to apply some of those different learning strategies. Now, as our explanatory movie goes ahead and plays, we then have the ability to apply both elaboration as well as a concrete example. If I go ahead and select any one of these different um, um, annotated slides, we can then get a good thorough understanding about the differences between the normal anatomy versus the gradual diseased anatomy for, <clears throat> for the coronary artery as a result of a atherosclerotic plot buildup. And as we gradually progress through and work our way down the information chain, we're now able to apply the information that we previously learned towards a more clinical standpoint um, 
by relating that information over to the anatomical consequences, such as a change in nerve stimulation, tissue necrosis, as well as um, hypoxia of the brain. And as we sift through, we're then greeted with the relevant causes, symptoms, and treatment for this particular condition. And these have been nicely packaged into some downloadable PDFs, which you can then incorporate into your study notes to help make things more manageable. And towards the end, you'd get a full comprehensive overview encompassing both the incidents, relevant anatomical changes, as well as those all important symptoms, diagnosis, and treatment. And each of these different menu options, once again, function very similarly to what we saw over in anatomy and physiology. Before we jump over into the learning outcomes, I'd just like to point out that once you're able to master the anatomy and physiology title, many of the other titles available to you will be quite easy to navigate and maneuver. But let's go and see how we're able to tie all of those six different learning strategies by exploring the anatomy learning outcomes for medicine. Now, this can be accessed by simply selecting on the title window or jumping over to learn. For today, let's go ahead and jump over into the thorax and scroll down and find one of our different learning outcomes. Now, as Angelique goes ahead and teaches us, or in this case, demonstrates the relevant su um, surface markings for the heart and great vessels, we're able to follow along with her guided video or lecture and perform a virtual dissection. Once again, this is where we're able to apply some of those different learning strategies of both dual coding, elaboration, as well as um, a concrete, um, <clears throat> apologies, a concrete um, example. And as she moves through some of the different sections, we're able to make use of these quick links to highlight those relevant structures. And once again, we can also go ahead and then create our own customized label diagrams as we follow along with Angelique while she presents her explanation. Now, there are some additional media options to help give us a better understanding, or in this case, to better elaborate some of the different surface markings for the heart and great vessels as we um, select and move through some of those different sections. And once we go ahead and complete this, we can simply move on to our next learning objective, once again, applying that learning strategy of a spaced approach. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just select one of these different examples. That one, my apologies for that. So let's go ahead and jump over into the abdomen for this case, just so that I can show you how you're able to apply the information. There we go, towards a more clinical setting. Now, with this particular learning outcome, once you've moved through describing the anatomy of the inguinal ligament and inguinal canal, combining all of the previous information for the basic anatomy and physiology, you're then able to apply that with, um, towards a more clinical setting using some of those different videos that can be found in the diseases and conditions title. Now, I know there was quite a bit of information piled within a very short period of time, but just to summarize, what we did today is that we explored how to apply six different learning strategies to help elevate and enhance your understanding of anatomy. We saw how we're able to apply the aspect of both dual coding, space practice, retrieval practice, elaboration, concrete examples, as well as interleaving using some of the various titles available through primal pictures. Starting off with anatomy and physiology, which serves as your bread and butter or virtual textbook by matting together the anatomy and physiology of the human body and teaching this content in a guided manner. We then jumped over and explored both 3D Atlas as well as 3D real time. We saw how to apply the different learning strategies of both um, retrieval practice, space practice, as well as dual coding. And then lastly, we took a more clinical approach and jumped over into diseases and conditions, as well as the different learning outcomes. We tied everything together, starting off with, <clears throat> not starting off, taking a look at how to create a self-paced and guided learning experience.